about to leave Already packing, come with me I'm not really Hello friends and enemies, welcome back to Happy For Now It's me Isabel here with a redo of a video I did last year A little over a year ago now And it's how I save money on digital books But really, this is like my biggest secrets on how I manage to spend as little as possible on books and I read a lot of new releases and awesome things but let me tell you I do not pay full price for any of these things and that is because I have a ton of amazing things that I use to like track when things price drop or um to see about different sales so let's talk about it. the first round is going to be how to like use your computer to find things um on sale and the second part i'll talk about all the libraries i'm aware of and y'all are gonna tell me ones that i didn't mention and other resources so first things first e-reader iq is your best friend if you want a new release romance book that is marked at 9.99 or 14.99 digitally because that does happen sometimes mark it on e-reader iq sign up here's what it looks like you'll track that price and have them email you because most of the time I have found that new releases go on sale within three to four weeks of coming out. The other thing to note with eReader IQ is you can look at the price history of a book. So let's say you find a book that's been talked about and you're like, wow, it seems really expensive right now. Like maybe it's 10 years old and it's $6.99 or $8.99 and you're like, hmm, does it have sales regularly? You can look at the history of this, the prices on the book and kind of see when it usually goes on sale. Um, like I know there's some books that I picked up before that I noticed like a trend where every three to four months that book would drop into like half the price. So I would just put an alert on it and pick it up once that price drop hit. The other extension that I think is absolutely vital is library extension. If you have not signed up for your local library, you need to go do that first things first. And if you think your local library isn't great, I've got options for you after this. Also, check your other bordering counties libraries. You may be able to sign up for a small fee. Some of them let you sign up in a county neighboring for free or a very, very small fee. I highly recommend. Just remember that fee is helping the library fund itself so it's not a wasted payment you're making, if that makes sense. Like you're helping the library buy more books and fund the library stuff with that money. It's the same way the tax money goes to the library when you live in that county. So library extension lets you put in all the libraries you're a member of. Here's mine. I have a lot. How do I have so many? Again, we'll talk about it in a minute. But this will tell me what library has the book, if Hoopla has it, if Scribd has it, um, and what the weight is on it. And honestly, like, I think being able to quickly see the availability of a book is like so helpful for me because I might be like, okay, I'll do a price alert on it and maybe I'm gonna see if I can get on like two wait lists at two different libraries and see how quickly I can get the book honestly a godsend um then some other quick like notes here on how i save money i follow people who share book sales do not do this if you are just going to buy every book because it is on sale that doesn't save you money you need to do this because you're looking um at books on sale by trope or something that interests you and only pick up the ones you think you're gonna read don't pick up every single book because it's free it's a disaster on your kindle learn from my mistakes <laughs> honestly so i follow the book queen on uh, twitter she shares daily ebook deals usually smart bitches trashy books sends out an email deal every week like on fridays with books on sale um romance sparks joy with caveat i am an admin of in our discord we post book sales as they become available for underrepresented authors um so that's a good way to see about stuff and um last but not least is bookbub which again though be cautious here you i unsubscribed from bookbub a while ago because i felt overwhelmed from options you are going to get so many things in those emails you need to be able to decipher what is a book you will read and what is a waste of your time because yes it's free but if you're never gonna read it is it worth taking up space in your digital library in your mind in that clutter zone it's not so just be careful all right uh, the one last note I have is don't buy Kindle Unlimited full price. If you are paying $9.99 a month for Kindle Unlimited, for, I don't understand how. Because they put that thing on sale multiple times a year. We are coming up on Black Friday again. It will be on sale this month. You can buy a year at a time. You can buy six months. If you buy six months on Prime Day, you can buy six months again. Do not 
There are promos out the wazoo, so do not pay full price for Kindle Unlimited. I don't know the last time I paid full price for Kindle Unlimited because I just renew it every so often for six months to a year and go from there. And that's how I keep it. So I don't feel like I have to read as many books from it either for it to be worth it, but it is wonderful. All right, let's, let's talk about libraries. Like the elephant in the room, the thing I have a collection of, which is library cards. Um, I feel like this is a, like, it's not like a secret, but like, I feel like nobody talks about it enough kind of thing. And that is honestly your local library, your libraries in your area are such a resource. So I live on a state line um, and I'm able to go over the state line and get a library out of state from the Charlotte Mecklenburg Library who I mentioned in this list because you can also buy an out-of-state card from them. For me it was really easy because I just like went up to the library branch across the road from me. I was like hi I would like a card and they're like cool here you go and I paid like $45 for it a year. Easy peasy so worth it y'all um the biggest thing here is like you just have to kind of google and look around and all the libraries have different prices there is one library i have found that apparently allows hoopla access but is a very expensive um and i think it's the miami dade library but i cannot remember if that was exactly it but i know the price was like 140 dollars so I guess if you're desperate for Hoopla with an out-of-state card, that would be an option for you. Um, I just think that's a lot of money. You could literally get like all three of these library cards I'm about to mention for that price. So we also have the Brooklyn Public Library, which has an out-of-state card. It has an online application that is so simple and easy, very straightforward. It is $50 a year and I get so many books from the Brooklyn Public Library. It's amazing. It literally pays for itself within about two months for me with audiobooks every time I buy it, renew it. Like, that's how good it is. It is so good that my mom got her own card so that way we weren't competing on holds as much. Like, we share cards so that, that way we could have more holds. Um, again, Charlotte Mecklenburg, that one is 45 And then there is the Houston Public Library card, which is $40 a year, which is not bad at all. Um, I have not gone through their online process, so I don't know how that is but it is another option for those of you looking. Again, for the price of the one, you could literally have three cards. So, your choice. The other suggestion I'm going to make is make bookish friends in real life. I know, scary talking to humans, but the best thing you can do, besides get barked at by your dog while you're trying to film a video, <laughs> is trade library cards. So I have swapped library cards with my mom who doesn't live in the same state as me. I've swapped with my friend who lives in Texas, one of my friends in DC area we've swapped cards. Like I have swapped cards with a ton of people um, and it doesn't do any harm. Like we're not doing anything illegal. We just use each other's cards to check out books digitally if something's more available in their library than ours. Um, and it is a godsend. So swap library cards. Maybe your partner doesn't use the library so you get them a library card and then give that to your friend if you don't want to like share account numbers. But swapping library cards has been one of my favorite things. Um, and yeah it just honestly at the end of the day to my knowledge it basically helps the library because they're getting more circulation which increases their budget because if they're not getting books checked out they don't get more money. So I mean yeah. I honestly you <laughs> would not have the list I have without the swapped library cards. Uh, a few other resources I wanted to mention of course is Scribd which I will leave you a link for two months free down there if you want and I will get a month membership and that is $9.95 a month and you have access to audiobooks and ebooks and comics. A good good selection honestly and that library extension app does track Scribd so I do like using that when I am looking for something and I can't get it from the library and it's on Scribd I will listen there. Uh, my biggest tip on Scribd don't download the books and listen to them over the uh, your cell network or Wi-Fi. That way you get throttled less, it seems. I've not fully tested this, but it seems that way. If I don't download the book, I don't get throttled. So definitely suggest that. Uh, there's also AnyPlay, which I have not tried. Uh, I know, I think Brie over at Love and Words did a video. If she did, I will link it for you in the description box of trying AnyPlay. Uh, but that is another resource for free audiobooks and you can also check now be careful because every spotify audiobook is not li licensed by an author but some authors audiobooks are on spotify 
in the appropriate manner, if that makes sense. So some are pirated, some are not. I would do a quick Twitter search um, of their name and see if they've talked about it. I know Katie Roberts, uh, Electric Idol, is licensed on Spotify appropriately for her and on there on purpose. So that's an option. You can't speed up books there though, I think. I think you're stuck at one time speed, but still, it's a resource. If you have free Spotify, like if you don't even have to have a paid account to do it. So I think there's a lot of options to save you some money on digital reading. Let me know your favorite way to save money digitally on ebooks. Uh, I'm gonna assume a lot of you are like me and it's the library and watching for sales. And if you don't wanna do that, you can leave me a money-related emoji of your choice because I'm telling you, I easily save over thousands of dollars a year with this, these tricks. It's amazing. <laughs> uh, yeah, so leave me that emoji. You will find links to everything I talked about in that description box as well as links to be my friend anywhere on the internet and I will see y'all in a few days. Bye. Already packing, come with me. I'm not really asking. We'll get away to a place where we don't know about to see the world in action. What we can be life with no distractions. We'll get away. This is